this is Karen. Um, Karen has a company that's called Trendalytics, and you just launched actually um, here at the conference. Um, you're analyzing the data online to tell people what clothing and trends are actually resonating with consumers, correct? Right. But you're still in the very, very early stages. Right. We're just getting started. Just getting yeah. started. So tell us what, what exactly you're doing. You're going across and you're combing the web. Right. So essentially we're looking at what products resonate with consumers across the social web, including networks like Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, um, even Instagram, and marrying those patterns with what's happening in online search so that product companies can understand what's resonating with their consumers. Which sounds obvious, but um, you know, actually in this space, a lot of decisions on the creative marketing and merchandising side are made largely on intuition. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's a lot of opportunity there where we want to empower people and organizations to make data-driven decisions that not only back their intuition, but make sure that they don't skip a beat in terms of like revenue opportunities. So this, you're thinking it could level out the playing field a little bit. I mean, there's a, there are some really, really smart people with amazing intuition in terms of making buying decisions, and it's almost like they set the trends, you right. know, a, across the web. Could this reverse that a little bit? It's almost like the people then start setting the trends, and then the designers kind of follow. No, it's a little. I mean, I still believe that it's an influencer-based model. A lot of trends. They don't start from, it, it doesn't come out of thin air. It's usually seeded. And if you see it a lot, you know, not only in fashion, but in technology too, like where you have your early adopters and trendsetters. And I definitely think that the fashion set is like that. The biggest problem that a lot of even the trendsetters have in terms of making buying decisions is understanding when a trend is going to hit. And also, you know, um, like when something's going to decline. So a lot of times the current data you have is misleading. So like last season's bestseller is not necessarily next season's bestseller. So it's really hard to under, like predict when you should stop buying into a trend. You know, or like from the other perspective, like we've done a lot of customer discovery with buyers at leading retailers um, that are very, you know, fashion forward, but Fashion forward be, can be, being fashion forward can be a curse because you're early on trends and sometimes, you know, like a very common story with a lot of merchants is that they invest in a trend super early, it doesn't do well, and then they're a little bit squeamish to invest again when it actually peaks. So we're helping empowering them with data to not only back their own intuition, but to make sure they're making the right decisions for their business. But uh, the data, would I would imagine, by the time, if you're looking at what's happening right now and you're giving them that data, I would almost think it would be too late at that point to jump in on a trend mm -hmm. or pull out. I mean, because at the point, I mean, are you um, helping them by using you know data from previous trends to show, okay, well, here we are in this particular trend. In the last trend that was like this, um, people started pulling back at this point, so you might want to jump out now before it, you see a decline. Right, and it's all about looking for leading indicators, and so like seeing like when like seeing how consumers are reacting to, you know, influencers saying like stripes are important and, you know, what's the acceleration and dispersion of that in some instance and also what's really powerful about the data that's out there for fashion is are the, the runway images really, which right. is a huge part of what we do. And um, right now, like the runway is a leading indicator for a lot of trends, um, whether you are, you know, at Neiman Marcus or The Gap or like Kohl's, a lot of merchants look towards that to, un to get inspiration and understand what trends they want to commercialize. Now what's interesting there is that the runway has become a very, very public event where there's a lot of social engagement. And so, you know, the fall fashion shows just ended or, you know, they're kind of like wrapping up right now in Paris. And this is merchandise that people are making multi-million dollar decisions on today. Right. And today, there's a lot of people sharing this across the web, you know, whether it's on Pinterest or on blog posts. And so there's a lot of data in terms of what consumers resonating with consumers, and that's really powerful for brands and retailers to understand as far as, like, you know, if lace is really popular, which is something we saw, or, you know, are people still responding to peplum, or is that kind of over? You know? So you can process the data within hours of, mm -hmm. you know, pictures being taken and such on the runway, put that all together really quickly and feed that real time to see which pictures are being shared the most and that kind of thing, and which right. ones are being talked about the most. Right, so it's really tying that piece together and looking at the whole conversion funnel. Like, social is one piece of it, but search has, um, 
a higher per intent to purchase. And so really looking at the whole spectrum of how consumers are, you know, first being inspired and then starting to look and then converting. So following that funnel. So you're still kind of at that conceptual stage. You have a, you know, still a lot of you're testing out. You teamed up. Do you have a technical co-founder? Yeah, I have two um, partners, um, Kevin and Chow, which were amazing. Um, we became friends first. We actually had consumer-facing companies. They were um, had comparison shopping on Pinterest, and I was looking at the fashion industry's data. It was a Pandora of style thing, and we realized that together we could build something greater. Um, they both have masters in computer science and have been, um, you know, have expertise in data mining and business intelligence at companies like Microsoft and IBM. Oh, fantastic! So, so when can we see, you know, something out of you guys? That, that's well, we a just bit more. showed a you demo. Just showed, yeah. Okay. Um, so you know, and it's just the beginning. It it works, and we're getting feedback and all of that. Um, we're definitely working on the designs a little bit more, but um, we're actually, you know, it is early for us to be here. But you know, we're definitely of kind of that lean startup mentality where we're actually working with our pilot customers and incorporating their feedback. So. Um, I mean, they're really our partners, and so we're building towards what they want, you know, versus just building out of a vacuum. So I think our product will constantly change. Um, the vision will always be the same, but you know, features and tweaks will all incorporate what customers want. Any concern about that you have launched a little bit too early and put the word out there as to what you're doing? Um, you know, I, I, we were kind of debating, um, but. No, I think it's okay. We've gotten so much out of the conference. I think Jason and the team does such, such an amazing job, and it's just been beneficial for us. And so, although we're, we were in stealth mode, we were never in stealth mode. Like, we started customer discovery from day one. Mm -hmm. um, we were getting feedback from customers and potential users throughout the process, and we kind of have a two-pronged strategy where we want to work in designing the features with the actual users and then still talking at you know with the C level execs at the companies to make sure that this is something that they would want that what they would approve as well. So I think even when we have millions of dollars, you know, we want to always maintain um, this type of culture because I think it's important. I think, you know, as a company as you grow and you know, you feel like you own a market, then that's when you're kind of undertaken. So we're actually launching an innovation partner program where we're working closely with like rising stars at a number of the top retail companies where they would always be involved and you know we want to do it for them to help excel their careers too.